Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. You know what's funny? So Franklin Armory is sponsoring the show. Shout out to them. I was actually talking to Brandon over at Franklin Armory, and we had the same exact discussion. Really? <laughs> yeah, because I said to him that... You know, uh, one of the things, we're kind of living in a vacuum of after NRA, right? The NRA has kind of like fallen apart. And when the NRA was, uh, you know, before all of this stuff happened with the NRA and lots of us separated, we're mad at it. And, you know, all these things came out and whatever, you know, the NRA was basically a place where all, all these companies in the in the gun world, all these industries, they gave their money to the NRA and then they felt like, okay, we did what we had to do. They gave them the money. Okay, and then they decided who were going to be the voices. Mostly, you know, this is my opinion. They wanted to make sure they had some kind of control or ownership over those voices. And, you know, this is how things ran. Now we're kind of living in the absence of that. Before, you would see folks like, you know, Colio Noir was uh, up there. There were other people. But the NRA kind of had a machinery. That's the side of it, I think, that we really needed, that machinery side of it, to help get voices out there. In the absence of that now, we have lots of voices and lots of people like Rhonda and all the people that we can mention on, on all aspects of this. But we don't have any machinery to help get them out in front of people. And this is one of the reasons why that's missing. And I wish the industry would figure out a way to, to uh, still make that machinery work. Go ahead, John. Well, uh, GOA have funded uh, Maj's tour to uh, the inner cities. Mm -hmm. uh, to go right. to the inner cities and actually talk to the residents of the inner city about their 2A rights and about the history of gun control and everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we, we sent them around to a bunch of different cities. And I think we need more voices to do that. Mm -hmm. as well. um, and I don't think that we need the absolute control that uh, like the NRA well, what I'm not, what I'm talking about is not about control of one said organization. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is clearly we have to move in a different direction. Mm -hmm. And the direction I'm talking about is billboards plastering all across this country with faces that's different. We yeah. can't continue to worry about what happened with the NRA, what they they do with yeah. the money. It's over with the money is spent is gone. Yeah. Or whatever. We, we need to do be, this. I don't know. We need to but do this differently thing. going we forward. We have to find. We have to find a way mm -hmm. to market and promote black firearm ownership other than going out and talking to classes of people. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about reaching these people when they're driving by. We see McDonald's advertisement. We see, even when you open your email, right? Mm -hmm. When you open your email and you get it from a manufacturer of some type of gun thing, you see a guy wearing a coat or a jacket or mm -hmm. some, some binoculars or, mm -hmm. or some part of a rifle or Whatever the case may be, that's advertisement, mm -hmm. marketing and promoting. That has to be more of us involved. Mm -hmm. And not saying that they don't have some. Let's just find a way to, you know, boost that up a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. that's how you capture the people here. Everybody is not going to come out. The ones that come out to the class and the course, that is great. Mm -hmm. how, many, how long do you think you can do that? Look, I'm saying look. you got to get get in the front of the people another way. And, and I'm just talking billboards and advertisement and marketing where it could be seen. And then you grab them, then you start getting them to think and leaving it on their minds. If they come from work and they're sitting in and they're driving and they look and they see an advertisement and they're gonna think about that later. Boom, I saw a black gun or some person with a gun and they were black. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about on a different level. Right. You have to tap into the mental. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have some ideas. Uh, I want to. I want to get some of your ideas and and tell you some of my ideas, and then we can discuss it and see what we can do. Okay. okay. Are you going to do that? Now? Are you going to kick those ideas out right now? Oh no! Uh, oh. No, no. <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah. You got to remember, Hank. These are my ideas. 
Got my eye on you, John. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, really, I, think, I think it's no, I really think that well, it it it's time. It's time right. to do something different. Because we've stomped the grounds before. Uh, the things that we see Maj do, me, myself, Mr. Otis McDonald, mm-hmm. David and Colleen Lawson, mm-hmm. back in 2010, a, mm-hmm. total, a whole decade ago, we were out on the L stations, bus stations, train lines, mm-hmm. passing out literature. Those people laughed us in our face. Mm-hmm. They laughed at us and they balled our paperwork up and they threw it on the ground. Well, we couldn't leave it there because we printed it and it was ours. Mm-hmm. And we were marketing and promoting firearm ownership in the black community. Mm -hmm. Although we were laughed, you know, out the station, but we stayed there. We did our job. You know, we're Mm grown-ups and we're trying to educate these people. And Mm -hmm. now, a decade later, we have concealed carry. So all the while where we were being told, oh, you guys are crazy. It'll never happen. You will never carry a gun in Chicago. We did our footwork. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we started grassroots around the city of Chicago, but once again, black gun ownership, they're afraid to come out and get involved. They're scared they're going to be reported. Mm-hmm. Or they may be known as, oh, you were part of that gun group, so you must have a gun. And they think the police is going to come in mm-hmm. and do something. Once again, it goes back to corruption. So yeah, I think not a- too many people are strong enough and brave enough to step out in the forefront like an Otis McDonald or Rhonda Ezell. Yeah, you know absolutely. I yeah, I, I I thank you for doing that. I mean, that was that was like you said, the grassroots of doing it. And I think today, if we look around the world, or if you look around America, we've got lots of people of color, of, uh, to, f- from that matter, of all races that never spoke absolutely. up about guns before. I think overriding the stereotype that it's just something for some old, you know, white guys somewhere. <laughs> the thing is, is now we need to we need to like you said, we need to figure out how to kick it up to another level and it's probably right. it's going to take all of us to get on board right because they're not going to invite Absolutely. us there the, a lot of places aren't going to invite us to that thing i see people talking about how daniel defense tried to run an ad on the super bowl and that was turned down there's a lot of things out there now i mean even Absolutely. even what we're doing here youtube has restrictions and facebook and this place and that place has restrictions for sure um mm-hmm. and i think that like this is what I was thinking about when you were talking about this uh, when we started talking about this. There's lots of people around the country right now trying to rip down statues, right. you know, because they feel like those statues are racist. And it goes back to what you were saying: gun control in America started from a racist point of view. If you want to tear right. down something that's really racist and horrible in America, you might want to start with all those gun control laws. Absolutely, and that's that's exactly what I've been saying. Yeah. Go ahead, John. John? After the Civil War, uh, that's when gun control really kicked off, and it was to prevent the freed blacks from owning guns. Mm -hmm. Then Mm -hmm. in the 60s, uh, California kicked off gun control because they were afraid of the Black Panthers exercising their rights. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. these are the very measures that you you base this off of. You say, OK, we dealt with slavery. We dealt with Jim Crow laws. We dealt with gun control. Then mm-hmm. there's oh, no guns for Negroes. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, wow, we you don't want us to defend ourselves. And to this day, they take this gun control, gun control. It's not about safety. It's about controlling the people. Mm-hmm. And I, and, th- and that's where the statement came in when I said we have these young people out here marching saying that their black lives matter, that mm-hmm. they want racial equality. Mm-hmm. And those are the people that I'm saying have no clue to what we're talking about, about what true freedom is. Mm-hmm. We shouldn't be paying fines and fees to exercise a right. You know, yeah. self-defense is if a human you right. Have to, here's, you know, my, is, here's, one, here's one of my things I think about this, right? It's like people are calling to defund the police. Um, you know, I don't really, I don't think that's a good idea in any way. But when people call for that, I say, yeah, why don't you go ahead and do it? Because here's my thing. If you have to call for the police to save you and you mm-hmm. have to expect for them to save you, then they are your masters. Absolutely. Just think about that, These right? People, if you if you absolutely. want equality, like everything starts from you as a person, your own responsibility for everything around you. You should be able to defend yourself, right? Yeah. And you, if you have to call someone else to defend you, then that person is your that person's your master. It's like if you're a little kid and your mom has to come save you, right? 
If your mom well, has to are, come save you, then you're a little kid. These are the things that they don't understand. They, mm -hmm. they don't have a sense of knowing that they are responsible for their own safety, that they are their own first responders. I saw uh, a couple young ladies crying to the police during these protests, mm -hmm. talking about, you're supposed to save us. And it broke my heart because they're not. The, the we serve and protect on side of the car is they serve and protect the law. Mm. They don't protect individuals. You're responsible for your own safety. And them not knowing the law and out there crying on the shoulders of police. And then at the same time, you want to, you know, fight and, and get into these co physical confrontations with law enforcement and then defund the police. Like, what do you want? Mm. These people don't even know what they want. That's how I know it's not the the little ones that really marching for the Black Lives Matter thing, but it's the upper echelon people with the finances that are funding, mm -hmm. that are vilifying, the, you know, the bad portion of what's taking place here. Yeah. Can I ask you a question, Ron? Absolutely. Uh, do you think that the people that are marching are being used as pawns by the uh, politicians? Absolutely. They're being dragged through the 100%. mud. 100%. We're Again. all being used as pawns. Again. All of I, us. Absolutely. All of us. And we, you have to know and figure out when, you know, to move around. Mm -hmm. And the fact that, once again, and I say that because here's a fine example. If you're content with a law enforcement officer kneeling to you, what does that accomplish? It accomplishes nothing but a mental thing. Because that's what people feel. Oh, they kneeled with us. I'm happy now after I've torn up and destroyed the whole entire country. You didn't ask for anything. What are you fighting for? Do you have an agenda? Do you have a list of things mm -hmm. that you want your local politicians or your congressmen, legislators to change? They had 10, 20, 30, 40 years to do so, but they didn't process it in that matter. They only processed it based on skin color. Mm -hmm. That's how they've been duped. Are they pawns? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the same politicians that are right now throwing on some kente cloth and kneeling down and doing all that kind of stuff were just a couple of months ago uh, planning red, more and more red flag laws. We have, already have red flag laws around the country. They were planning more and more red flag laws, restrictions, and things like that. And eventually for the police, because I don't know who else was going to go around and take your guns, Right? right? They were planning for this That's same police to go around and take your guns that today they're like, oh, yes, we're for that. We're going to defund the police. We're all for that. It's it's all boondoggle. It's not real. It's not a real Once thing. Once again, they don't know what they're asking for. They don't know what they're talking about. We could take Seattle as a prime example of what's to come. Mm -hmm. Chaz. Yeah. Right? Or chop or whatever. Okay. I think it's chop now. Whatever. Yeah, I think it's chop now. Eh. Yeah. I mean, they don't really stand a chance against against uh, military law enforcement or real gun owners. I'm <laughs> just saying. Yeah. You know, they have to be careful picking, you know, picking their battles or so on and so forth. But how long are we going to allow that to happen? Because then that that's what I'm talking about. When people see that, people have processed that here, right? Mm -hmm. So everybody knows about it. If it would, if it was, if it didn't have any view, if there wasn't any way to see what was going on there, they would be minimized, yeah. right? That's why I'm talking about. We have to take this thing with black gun ownership to a higher level where it can be processed, where people mm -hmm. can actually see something. Yeah. Also, I think that, um, and you guys could tell me what you think about this, John. You could tell me, Rhonda. Um, I think that thankfully for lots of, there's this image of the gun guy out there, right? that this is some kind of savage. He's just waiting to take people out. This should be a, an illustration to people that actually gun owners are pretty peaceful. Gun yeah. owners are pretty calm, quiet, peaceful people that are actually not just waiting to take anyone out because you would have already seen it. If gun people would really get set the off problem. the way that these guys would have gotten set off, what we're seeing in, in the news would just be like a joke. I would have to, uh, my magazine made by K A E. I think I I think I told someone in an interview interview recently that gun owners are so humble mm -hmm. because we know that we are in possession of a firearm. Mm -hmm. We know that, that firearm will take a life 
you know, mm-hmm. is capable of taking a life mm-hmm. if we utilize it to defend our lives. Mm-hmm. And we know that you can't take that back. So we're not running around here waiting for the moment. I wish someone would, you know, mm-hmm. as if you're just waiting to shoot someone. Mm-hmm. That's not who gun owners are. That's not who we are. But we are prepared. We train hard. We, ed- you know, try to educate. But we're not, not looking for a fight. We try to actually back down mm-hmm. and make sure that we don't get into any confrontations. That's the goal, to disengage and separate. Mm-hmm. I hope know? for the best, prepare for the worst. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. You know, I and, and you know what? Look, sometimes I wish that we... Uh, that we were capable of getting out there more and getting our voices heard more. At the same time, there's like a very deliberate uh, attempt in America to suppress the voices of people that uh, believe in the Second Amendment. And I think one of the reasons for that is if you are, because here's my thing, I agree with the fact that a lot of this had its roots in racism. I think today it's more like classism. I think there's, there's certain elites that rule this country, as well as other places, but specifically in this country, there's elites that rule, and they know that they'll have everything. They'll have health care. They'll have security. They'll have everything. And the one thing they don't want the rest of America to have is guns. They don't want us to have guns and be a militia, be organized, be able to push back against whatever it is they want, right? When they set these laws, they just want us to get into lockstep and do what they say we should do, regardless of the color of our skin, they want to disarm us. But they're not planning on getting rid of guns. Not they want to dis- disarm us, but they take that and they take the Second Amendment and utilize it as their political pawn. Mm-hmm. That's why every time there's more gun control, it's the Democrats pushing for more gun control because I don't know where they get off thinking that just Republicans exercise their rights. That's how it's processed. Mm-hmm. But here nor there because we know that the Republicans had both um, cabinets at one point in time and could have brought national reciprocity to, you know, bring it up and they didn't. Mm-hmm. And that was when when President Trump first got into office. We can go back and check that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think I don't know who was the um, was it Rand Paul or someone didn't bring it up, but they didn't bring it up, and and we could have voted on that. But I think um, well, you're talking about you're talking about strengthening um, uh, pro Second Amendment uh, rights in America once when they had the super majority. Right. Yeah. Oh, and here's the thing: when I, when I say that, mm-hmm. when, what, based on what you were saying about the elite know what they're going to have mm-hmm. down the line, that's why the, they jar with the Second Amendment so much, mm-hmm. and they want to tell people to believe people that guns are bad, and only those people want to have them so that they can do this to you and people process that without doing any homework Mm -hmm. you know so make sure to check out hankstrange.com you can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts